nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. Hello, we are uh, going to uh, cover in this section Peltier coolers. Uh, these were one of the early applications of thermoelectrics. Um, uh, the real first commercial success for thermoelectrics uh, were uh, to make very tiny um, coolers that are used for um, uh, semiconductor lasers for fiber optic communications or for um, detectors. Uh, there are two reasons. Uh, in some applications, uh, temperature stability gives wavelength stability, which is important for high-speed fiber optic communication, but also cooling below ambient reduces the noise, um, and that's quite important for many sensing applications. These type of um, very tiny thermoelectric Peltier models inside uh, uh, optoelectronic electronic packages have been around um, for uh, more than 40 years and they're still quite in use. Um, um, uh, something that really started uh, maybe about 15-20 years ago was uh, to add Peltier coolers for car seats. Um, basically have a car seat that could be both heated and cooled um, and here is a case even though the thermoelectrics uh, they have lower efficiency comparing to um, uh, the mechanical uh, engines um, uh, the, what is used typically for air conditioning in the cars, the fact that you uh, specifically cooled the person uh, sitting on the uh, seat and not the whole car, uh, you need a less cooling power and still could be advantageous. And the other main advantage, of course, is very fast response, uh, typically less than one minute um, could be done with this type of in-seat coolers. Um, uh, if we look at fundamental limits of performance of refrigerators, uh, this is the type of curve uh, as a function of uh, uh, cooling temperature difference between the cold and hot side, what is the coefficient of performance? And here is the Carnot cycle. And these are the different curves one could get for ZT from 0.5 to ZT of uh, 4 to 20. One thing to notice is um, a difference from uh, generators. Today's state-of-the-art devices are equivalent to a material with a ZT average of about 2. So, uh, uh, in the case of generators, uh, the ZT average of uh, uh, equivalent uh, generators are 10. So the, here maybe is a place where thermoelectrics could compete more easily. Uh, you can see the uh, Stirling uh, cryocoolers uh, with a large temperature difference. They have COP less than one. Today's refrigerators um, uh, in houses are typically COP of three and Stirling refrigerators could be higher. TE refrigerator again are uh, currently with a ZT of 0.5 are lower, but this is an area where improvement of material parameters um, could play um, an important role. So what um, here was an interesting paper that uh, described, uh, compared um, the performance of thermoelectrics for a small scale refrigerator. So it's a case where you have a casing and just a thermoelectric model. Uh, the COPs are small, um, is about uh, 0.2 to at most about one. Um, for the small size uh, refrigerators, because mechanical um, uh, uh, engines don't scale as well. Um, the COP is, is also low, but still, uh, so you see it's about 0.8. So this is a case for small scale refrigerators. Um, uh, thermoelectrics could be still useful, and this is an area where uh, if you look at how much uh, these COPs are compared to what you would expect in a, uh, a material uh, kind of figure of merit, is actually improvement are possible, and this is an area where uh, system optimization, reduction of the um, uh, interface thermal resistance, better heat exchangers could play a big role. Um, what you see uh, now, uh, it has become popular uh, in the last 10, 15 years, a lot of very small scale um, type of uh, domestic coolers or even single um, cup coolers or heaters uh, that have become popular. Uh, the efficiency is not large, but again here, low weight, uh, very quiet and all solid state um, are reasons people are using that. Here's an interesting comparisons between thermoelectrics um, and um, 
conventional uh, engines, uh, uh, refrigerators for vaccine systems, uh, you can again see some of the weights and some of the cooling requirements and so on. Uh, this can be done with thermoelectrics. An area there was uh, a lot of interest early on was localized heating in microelectronics. Here you can see a map of uh, temperature profile in an IC chip in active operation. Some areas of the chip could be um, 80, 90 degrees Celsius, but the rest of the chip could be cooler, 50 degrees Celsius. Often you have to cool the whole chip and um, that means you need a bigger heat sink and you need more power. If you could select actively cool the hottest spot, um, then um, there is potential uh, to make the chip uh, work better. Uh, advantages could be lowering the leakage uh, current because that's exponential with temperature. Lifetime is also exponential with temperature electromigration, uh, oxide breakdown. Typically a cooling of 15 degree can uh, increase the lifetime by a factor of four. Um, so uh, these are cases where there was a lot of interest, but this is an area, uh, also in addition, interconnect delay, cross stack noise. Um, there were quite a bit of uh, research, but really this did not materialize commercially. Um, the main reason is how to locally cool uh, an area on the chip uh, is very hard um, to make uh, TE coolers uh, with the right power density uh, at uh, inside the IC chip at the uh, really cost that could be done with consumer electronics. Um, some of the early work our group had work is the possibility to engineer silicon property in this case is to make a multi-layer super lattice of silicon, silicon germanium carbon, fully um, lattice matched to silicon. The thickness is only three micron and uh, with this um, you can actually make these thin film refrigerators integrated with uh, electronics and because you, there is less um, uh, interface resistances you can get cooling power densities more than 500 watt per centimeter square with a cooling of about 4 degrees C at room temperature and 7 degrees C at 100 degrees Celsius, even though the material ZT is actually quite modest, is 0.08 to 0.1. Uh, so this is a case where um, uh, uh, you don't need a real uh, very high ZTs, but full integration and reduction of interfaces uh, could play a role. Um, later on in an analysis, we were able uh, to show that um, you can increase the maximum cooling from the five to seven degrees up to 15 to even 30 degrees if you have a ZT of 0.5 and if the material thickness is about um, 10 microns. Uh, so uh, these are some of the predictions here. 10 micron thick monolithic micro refrigerators with a modest ZT can really achieve kilowatts per centimeter square. What is interesting is here you can increase ZT by either reducing the thermal conductivity or by increasing the seabed. And the impact on the refrigerator is not the same. Is that means that ZT is not the only parameter, is because of the parasitics that happens inside the device. And here we are about hot spot removal. Increasing of the Seebeck coefficient or the power factor is more important. And that's um, different if you remember in the case of power generators, when we look at the cost, uh, reduction of thermal conductivity was more. So that tell you Z T does not give you the full picture depending on application, certain parameters in ZT play a bigger role. Um, finally, um, uh, just you know, as a completion, um, uh, the idea of cooling being separated from a device um, uh, uh, kind of can be expanded. Here is a work almost uh, 16, 17 years ago. Uh, injection current internally cooled light emitter. You can have a PN junction where you have a separate heterostructure for both electron confinement, hole confinement, as well as for light confinement. So that's a typical design of a light emitting device. But by adjusting the ba band structure, you can have optical refrigeration. So you can have a net cooling for electrons and for holes before they recombine. And again, these are um, ideas that you can get uh, through this design, couple of hundred watt per centimeter square, exactly near the active junction. These are things that have been 
uh, demonstrated in papers. Really, in um, practice, uh, the idea of internal cooling have not um, been uh, 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 quite uh, commercialized. And part of it is that um, uh, the, while the cooling hill is uh, can be more than what is the joule heating. Uh, for a lot of optoelectronics, you need the independent knob to change the temperature of the device. And um, uh, since you still need the thermoelectric cooler outside, uh, that, may, that may not be advantageous. So that gives you an idea about uh, some of the applications of the Peltier coolers, both at the macro scale um, as well as uh, inside the devices. Um, the last section of the talk, I will go over the overview of the whole um, uh, section on systems.